Welcome to Jerusalem again. <laughs> so many people ask me, do I live in Jerusalem? No, I live in Tel Aviv, but I do have the Jerusalem syndrome. I must be in the city at least twice or three times a week because I cannot breathe without it. In front of you, far, far away, you can see Mount of Olives. And this is the Christian quarter outside the walls of Jerusalem. You can see here Notre Dame de Sion or Notre Dame de Jerusalem and St. Louis, one of the hospitals, another French hospital. And here you can see the walls. This is the northern part of the wall. We are around the northwest part of the wall. And you can see here a gate. That gate is the newest gate and it's called the New Gate. Uh, in Arabic, Bab El Jadid, the New Gate. Why so new? Mainly because in the 16th century when the Sultan the Magnificent, uh, Suleiman Magnificent built the walls, he built seven gates. He didn't know that in the 19th century, the area outside the gates will be part of the institutes, the Christian institute that left the city, uh, the old city. Mainly because it was difficult, expensive, and now it's actually they felt safer. Then in that case, the French Catholic asked from the Sultan, from Hamid, Abdul Hamid II, to open them another gate. And that is the newest gate. Why? Because that is um, the easier way to reach the Christian quarter inside the old city and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Then in that case, this is the newest gate, but it was new. Um, it's only from the 19th century, but it was the border between Israel and Jordan. Uh, Jerusalem wasn't supposed to be part of Israel, not even part of uh, Palestine, and it was supposed to be owned by the United Nations. But at 1948, the Jordanians occupied all the future Palestinian territories uh, and the old city of Jerusalem. Then in that case, it became to be um, the border between Jordan there. That part is the no man land, belongs to the United Nations, and that part belongs to Israel. Funny things that happen here is that one of the nuns in that beautiful uh, hospice um, she looked downstairs from the window and her teeth fell to the ground. Um, they have to ask the United Nations, Israel and Jordan a permit, a permission to bring their back their teeth. Um, today it belongs to Israel and it can enter to the gate 24 hours a day. Then let's go through that as well. Welcome to the old city of Jerusalem and welcome to the Christian quarter of the city. The Christian quarter belongs to the Christians in uh, Jerusalem, but even in that Christian quarter, you can divide it, the streets into kind of different different neighborhoods of uh, different orders. To the left, behind those uh, shops, you can find the Terra Santa, the center of the Franciscans in uh, Israel. Franciscans for so many years, from the 14th century, uh, were the one who took care of the uh, Christian needs. They are talking a uh, 14th century, uh, it's the Muslim. Uh, government who control Jerusalem. Let me show you the map and I will show you the four quarters of it. You can see the Christian quarter and we enter through the new gate, the Armenian quarter, the Jewish quarter and I think you can understand that this is a political statement and the Muslim quarter. 
which is another political statement because that um, Jewish Orthodox sticker is hiding the word Muslims. Gosh, you can see more than that. You can see that the Western Wall is actually disappeared here. The word Temple Mount disappeared here. The only word that left is Al Haram al Sharif, which is the Muslim name of it, and you can understand uh, who destroyed that map. But we will go through the New Gate Street, which we are right here, through the Vesperes, the brothers, and then the Franciscans uh, to the Christian Quarter Street and to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It's important to understand that there are differences here as well. We will go through the uh, Catholic uh, streets, but here are, you can find here Greek Orthodox streets and Greek Catholic patri uh, Patriarch and Quarter as well. Greek Patriarch? A, a Greek Catholic? Yes, 19th century, some of the Greek Orthodox convert themselves into Catholic. Then they do have their own quarter or their own streets, but it's a Catholic order now. The shops are closed now, mainly because it's too early, and actually there are no tourists, but you can see here a beautiful sign of one of the best bakeries in uh, the city. Then if you are here, only good things will happen to you uh, if you will stop here to eat and drink. They have excellent good coffee and wonderful cakes. Armenian pottery, though it's not the Armenian quarter, you can find a very good place for it as well. If we're talking about that, Armenian uh, rest a restaurant as well. The Latin Patria is to the right of us, and we will have to take care of it and let me hide myself from here. Then he is heading to the is heading to the Latin Patria um, Institute. The Latin Patria were the one who controlled Israel. I mean, controlled Israel by the name of uh, the Catholic. They took care of the uh, Catholic um, needs in Israel. But that was until the crusade, I mean the end of the crusaders. When the Muslims came, they were kicked out from Israel and the Franciscans became in the 14th century, uh, they became to be the Christian order who took care of the Catholic, the Latin uh, Catholic needs as well then. The name of the street, oh, was taken down. I will show it to you later on. But remember we turn left. This part is the widest street in Jerusalem. Don't ask me why. Look at the tower of the um, San Salvador. Um, center, San Salvador is the um, uh, um, center of the Franciscans brothers in uh, uh, Jerusalem and we're gonna go through that street you can see the name of the street right now so empty here If you will continue straight ahead, we'll re reach the Casanova, which is a wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful place to stay. But if you will continue straight and then left, you will reach the Greek Orthodox part. And if you continue um, straight, now, yeah, you will reach the, the uh, Greek Catholic 
but we are entering to San Francisco's San Francis Square uh, Road. Sadly, because of coronavirus, a lot of the places are closed, and I'm not sure that I will be able to enter to the church, but I will ask them. If you want to celebrate uh, Christmas, this is the only place. I mean, 200, those 200 meters are full with beautiful lights, uh, with Christmas trees, but that's it. Usually the Christians in Israel, which are not a lot, we are talking about two Christians, are celebrating Christmas in Bethlehem. I mean, it's only nine kilometers from here. Now let me enter and ask them if I can visit the church. No one is here. Then. See if I can. Yes, I can. There's a mask now. to disturb the mast then you've been blessed now and the church is usually all the churches are facing to the east the church is facing to the north and that's because uh, it was one of the last institutes that were built here and um, they had no other choice it's a um, summer school and it's a, it's a Catholic one noisy that's where the local Christians Catholic Christians are here next to the next to the statue of Mary this is the scout area and See on top of it the remains of the Christmas tree. Remember that is the place to celebrate. It's sad, isn't it? 
um, for me to go to Christmas, it's to go to Bethlehem. I mean, there's no other reason to stay in Jerusalem. Most of the churches are closed. You can see here the symbol of the Jerusalem cross. Jerusalem is uh, the big cross, center of the world, and the four others, let me run away from those children. And um, other four belongs to whatever you want. Um, it can be Europe, Africa, um, it can be the four Gospels. Choose whatever you want. But the idea is that the biggest cross belongs, look up here for the door, belongs to Jerusalem, the center of the world. It's a beautiful picture. Um, you can see the entrance to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And look how many people are waiting outside, as I believe it's the Holy Easter or the Holy Fire, Holy Saturday. And soon you will see how crowded is that church. The minaret of the mosque that you see there used to be the Patria um, Palace until uh, at the time of the Crusader and Salhadin destroyed and built for the Sufis order a beautiful uh, mosque and center it's called El Halka um, Halka and Salhiya Salhadin the sun is in our eyes, but not for long. The Patra head is on entrance to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Then you understand that the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is not so far away from here. Look, a beautiful picture. You can take here with the sun, the mosque, and the beautiful empty street. quite hot now, but I will survive. It's only 30 degrees today, uh, in about two days it's going to be 34 degrees, then I'm okay with it. A hanker. let me show you the entrance of it. It's difficult now to see, but there are differences between the colors of the stones here black and white you can see it a little bit but we are turning to the christian quarter street to the left and as you can see empty sad isn't it Look at the umbrellas above us. The good thing in the whole city is that a lot of the streets are covered. And um, in that case, it's usually cool. Cooler than so many other places. If that used to be the Patria Palace, and you can see here one of the entrances to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the place that Jesus was crucified, died, and buried, and of course resurrected. It's from the crucifixion time, and you will see the same pattern um, at the entrance to the church itself. Now, remember, if I told that, I told you to continue straight to reach the Greek Orthodox uh, street, so neighborhood, then this is the street, Greek Orthodox Patria.
let's continue until we reach St. Ellen Street. From uh, the um, New Gate, it took me 20 minutes. Wow, a lot. But I'm walking slowly because I want you to see everything. Uh, until we reach that street, let me tell you that you can find so many other information in the description. And in the description, you will find my Facebook. Uh, um, oh, look at the birds. Someone is going to... Oh, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, you can find my Instagram uh, address as well. And buy me a coffee. What is buy me a coffee? The link of buy me a coffee is there. Uh, I'm not working from... February 2020, and as I can see it, there will be no tourists in Israel uh, for the next few months. I'm not starving, but I'm <laughs> almost reaching there. If you like that videos and you want to donate uh, something for me, I will be more than happy. Usually, uh, if you don't want to do that, don't. Um, you can ask me to light candles for you, to pray for you. I will do that, and today the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, I will do it as well. Uh, and that's the place to say thank you for the, uh, for the one who did it. And there are uh, not many, but a lot. Then I'm happy with that. St. Helen Street will take us to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. On the way, you will see Mosque of, uh, of Omar. Omar is one of the Khalifs um, at the beginning of uh, Islam time, 7th century. And um, the church of the Holy Sepulchre is surrounded with those uh, mosques, and the church cannot grow anymore. But the story, which is a beautiful story, is about the visit of Omar at Jerusalem, he entered to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, which we are reaching uh, to it soon. Uh, that's the entrance to it. And he told uh, the Patrach asked him to pray. But Omar said, if I pray in that church, they will turn it into a mosque. Then he went outside and prayed outside the church. And that's where they built Mosque Omar. Why to pray in a, in a church? Because Jesus is holy for the uh, Muslims too. But they don't see him as God or son of God. They see him as a prophet. Then let's enter to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. And now I can tell you for the first time I can see more than 10 people. At the square. Yes. Most of them are Israelis. They are, a lot of them are uh, studying for, uh, uh, they want to be tour guides, just like me. And I know that they have soon their exams. Then, as I believe, some of them are studying. Some of them are here just to enjoy this beautiful place. And there it is, the facade of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The facade is mainly from 12th century and up. Why it's not from the time of Jesus? You must understand that only in the 4th century, um, they built here a church. At the time of Jesus, it was a Roman area before the Romans owned it. It used to be owned by uh, Herod. Uh, from here, he used, it, uh, it used to be a quarry. From here, so many of the stones of the Jewish temple uh, were taken. And later on, the Romans turned that place into 
uh, a Roman area just after he died, uh, and just after after King Herod died. Uh, that's why they used it. Uh, ooh. That's why they used it as um, I'm, I'm, I'm not speechless because I saw my uh, Christian professor here. Um, wow, then I'm gonna say hi to her soon. That's why I'll say it again. Now I know that all those people came for, for her. And the Romans say, uh, uh, the, the Romans use it for their, uh, their um, uh, um, mission, uh, for example, to crucify people. Uh, Jews used that place, which was outside the city at that time, as um, a cemetery area. Then in that case, uh, that church been destroyed so many times by the enemies. Then uh, building, destroying, building, destroying. What you see here is many from 12th century and up. Uh, a tour of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre will be in a different video. Then here we're saying goodbye. And see you in my next video. And forgot to mention, subscribe my channel, please. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.